Hey you and welcome to my channel. My name is Tina and my aim is to improve your drawings just like others have done for me when I just started out. In today's video we're following up the features of a human portrait, so today we're gonna be focusing on the eyes. Well, one eye in particular since they're the same thing twice. Anyway, let's get started. I'm going to use pen pastel for the underdrawing of this one. These are little pens filled with pure pigment. It's just a powder, so you need to use the soft tools that you see me use here to apply it onto the paper. The advantage of using pan pastel instead of soft pastels for this is that you don't have to worry about getting the exact color or very close to it as with soft pastel sticks. With pan pastel you can mix it onto a sheet of paper before applying it to your paper. Pretty handy for skin tones in my case since I always have to search a little until I get the right skin tone. You can also make subtle changes to the color by adding a lighter or darker shade or even a different color to change the tone completely. It's pretty handy. By now you've seen me apply a darker line above and underneath the eye. This is the place where you've got those skin folds of the upper and lower eyelid. I look closely at my reference picture to see which colors I need to use for the skin around the eyes as this changes color quickly. For example at the top right side I use the lighter color already since that's the skin right beneath the eyebrow, which always catches some sun since it's a little thicker there. The skin closest to the eye will be darker since the eye is pushed a little back into the skull. That results in the skin closely to the eye being in shadow. But this isn't an anatomy lesson, it's just something to keep in mind so that you know why the skin there would be darker. And as I'm filling in the skin, I constantly look at my reference picture and lean back a lot of times to evaluate if my drawing is going into the direction I want it to. Also, a quick and handy tip, use the color picker tool to see which colors you should mix. Skin tones are really tricky, at least for me, so this comes in very handy. There are a lot of colors that most people don't associate with skin in there, like greens for example. By now you've seen me take out that dark brown pencil to darken up those two creases even more. I'm adding a bit of little lines coming off of them just to indicate those little lines coming from the big one that everyone has. Now on to the eye itself. I'm first using a light grey to color in the so-called white of the eye, which of course, we know, is never actually white. After that I'm using a darker grey to get in the shadows on top of the eye, caused by the eyelid and eyelashes above. Then it's time for the inner corner of the eye, where I'll lay down some light pink that connects to the darker pink in the corner itself. I'll put down that light pink again for the lower eyelid. But as you can see, I go over that with a few more colors to get it to the right skin tone. Layering colors is so easy with pastels, so take advantage of that to find the perfect mix of colors. And after that, blending it all out again with the blending stump. Going over the darker line from the upper eyelid already there, just because, well, let's face it, I couldn't help myself. Since we now have a fairly creepy eye without an iris or pupil, I decided it was time to focus on the skin again. As you can see, I like to jump around, this keeps it interesting for me as I'm not staring at the same part for a really long time. So going over the lighter areas of the skin with a very light peachy pink color, following up with a slightly darker brown color to let it fade into the darkest color on top. I'm using almost exclusively these three colors to glaze over the rest of the skin to keep it quite consistent. Quickly want to remind you of that big red button you see beneath this video. You would do me a great favor if you would click on it. This helps me grow my channel and lets YouTube know that my content is likable, which helps me reach more people just like yourself. So thanks in advance for clicking. While I have that darker color in my hand, time to darken those creases up once more and indicate the smaller creases coming off of the big one. This gives it more of a skin texture. At last I noticed the creepy eyeish thing staring at me, so I started with a color on that. Firstly starting with a very dark green for the outer edge of the iris, then going with a lighter one on the inside and an even lighter one next to that. For the part right next to the pupil I'm using an ochre color, since that's what I see on my reference picture. Always keep looking at that reference picture. On top of the ochre color I'm using an orangey brown to indicate those lines on top of the ochre color. Blending it all out with a blending stump to give me some more control over the area I'm blending. 
time to put in these dots on the iris. I find this to be really beautiful and unique, so of course I had to choose a reference picture that has these. Anyway, after that, time to put in that pupil, just using black here, nothing special, and using that blending stump to push it into the paper. Just around the pupil there's a little green, so we add this on top of everything that's already there. Now time for refinement. Look closely at your reference and search for those little lines that we all have inside of our iris. Mark those on your drawing, this way you create that nice depth, using lights and darks as we have both to keep it interesting. And as the color is filled in now, I notice that my shadow area is way too light, so I'm going over that with that black again. I'm also moving that light pink area a little more to the right since it seemed a little too far off for me. Then using that dark grey again to go around the iris and underneath the black shadowed part for extra dimension. In my head a little voice told me that it was time to put in the eyebrow, so that's what I did. Just make sure to look at your reference. Wait, I sound like a broken record, don't I? Anyway, and look how irregular these hairs grow. Many beginners make the mistake to put them all in the same direction using the same length. This gives it a really unnatural feel and look to it. Instead, make them a little wonky. One starting above or beneath another one, going upright instead of following the curve and so on. Now back to the eye itself, I start putting down the shadow of the reflected eyelashes and the eyelashes themselves. Here again, don't make them all go in the same direction, make some stick to each other like mascara would do and have some cross over, go left and right. But as with anything, do this with moderation. Don't go overboard and give the eye a really wonky look by making it seem like they all go in different directions. For the lower eyelashes, exactly the same thing goes. The finishing touches for me are the reflection in the eye and the reflection on the bottom lid. Just lightly pushing the pigment into the paper one more time so the streaks of my pencil are a little more faded. And then just using a dark pencil to go over the edge of the iris and darken it up a little. This makes it seem way more natural to me. Then indicating a few pink lines like we all have inside of the white of our eyes. And that's it, I'm ready to call it finished. I hope you liked this video, if you did please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate your support as this helps to grow my channel and reach other people just like yourself. Hope to see you again next Friday and in the meantime have a great week.